Hey everybody, it's Sean with The Good Dog, and in our continuing series of Learn to Train the Good Dog Way, we've got Gracie. Hi Gracie. Say hi Gracie. There's Gracie. <laughs> Gracie did a board and train with us a while back. She had some fear aggression issues and she'd been biting people in the house. Um, she, she claimed a few victims. And um, so she also had problems with the uh, dog walkers coming in and the dog caretakers during the day. So we worked all that, sorted all that out. And um, so she's actually great inside the house now. She hasn't bitten anybody in a long time. She's, she's behaving really well. Dog walkers and caretakers come in, no issues. So she's rocking. Uh, the only thing the mom wants now is a rock solid recall. So she has sent us or sent her to us for some e-collar training. So yes, she's a tiny girl, which would be great so you guys can see even a small dog um, learning e-collar stuff, which will be great. So we're going to get started with her. First First of all, I've got her fitted with a Dr. IQ, which is made for small dogs. You see the box on it? It's really small, dainty, cute, right? Not too big even for a little girl like her. I've got it slightly offset, not right down the middle. Some bug action in my ear. Uh, slightly offset, about right here, nice and snug. Just a couple fingers under it. I wasn't I'm actually scratching, not showing collar fit. And then once I get it on the dog, I want to take the, the box of the collar and I want to just move it around a little bit, pull the fur out, make sure we're getting good contact from the two contact points right against the skin so we're getting a good read on the dog. That said, Miss Gracie, are you ready to get off to the races? Yes. So, what we're going to do is we're going to find a working level. We're going to start at zero. and just start tapping, going up through the digits, slowly looking for a reaction from her or a reaction from me, trying to swat bugs away. Also, I like to do it on pavement. You'll hear in all the videos, e-collar videos, I always talk about doing it somewhere with uh, low smell distraction stuff. So you don't want to do this at the park where a lot of people are screaming or a lot of dog scents or other scents are going around because with low-level e-collar training, the dogs can be distracted and never feel low-level. Once the distraction goes away, then the level's too high. So that's, that's kind of the ground rules. That's what we're going to start with. Nice snug fit on the collar. Start at zero. Start in a nice semi-neutral zone, as neutral as we can get. And then we're going to start right above zero and just, just look for a, we're going to look for a read on her. So I'm just going to let her hang out. Also, she's on a flat buckle collar. Don't have her on a prong collar or anything like that. I don't want you to have your dog on a prong collar because I want you to do the work with the e-collar and not have um, more sensation uh, coming from the prong collar than we want. So I'm just going tap, tap. Nothing. That's a level I've never seen a dog get before, so I'm not surprised. Tap, tap. Look at me, it's most likely just because I'm handsome. Get it. Tap tap. Tap tap. No reaction. Tap tap. Now I'm gonna stop saying tap tap because she's looking at me every time I say it, and I don't wanna mistake her looking at me for having a reaction. So I'm just gonna be quiet and just work through this. Most dogs don't look at me when I say that, but uh Chris it doesn't. Shake it off. I'm just gonna get her to where she's not pulling, and then we'll start again. So now she's kind of just looking down the street. Move up a couple digits. Now that was kind of a, a little bit of a, of a look, kind of sharp look. So we're gonna see what she does. She's a little itchy. Once I get her relaxed, and I'll do it again. Nope, I didn't tap, so that's just her being distracted. So with this kind of subtle stuff, we have to make sure we're not misreading the dog from something else. So now I'm going to go up a little bit more. Now that might
might have been a reaction. We're going to give it another second. It's good to take your time. There's no rush with this stuff. So. I'm going to take that as a reaction. So she did something unusual. She laid down simultaneously when I tapped the button. And then when I tapped it again after a few seconds, she stood up. So it looks like a pretty good coincidence that that's, what she's, that's, that's her signal that she's feeling it. She's not sure how to react to it. It's something she's never felt before. So something else to, to kind of give you a heads up on, it's oftentimes after you get that initial, <clears throat> that initial working level, then once you start working with it a little bit, it might become too intense because the dog's now accustomed to it, and now it's it's something that they're becoming sensitive to, and so you might have to dial down a little bit. So don't get a working level and go, we got the working level, we're good to go. The working level is a jumping off point, it's a starting point, and then watch your dog, watch your dog, watch your dog. So if, if that level that was just causing a reaction but nothing freaky for her or nothing uncomfortable for her starts to give her a, a, an uncomfortable reaction, then I'm going to immediately dial down. So I'm, I'm, like I said, this is a jumping off point. This is not the level that necessarily we're going to be glued to. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let her just kind of get a little distracted from me. I've got her on a flexi, but I've got the flexi locked. And so I'm using it kind of like a long line. I just don't want to deal with like a big 50 foot line. Come on, young lady. So once she gets kind of a little ways out from me, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the button and then I'm gonna give her light guidance back towards me. And when she starts moving towards me, I'm gonna let the button go and I'm gonna just say good. So that's gonna be our conversation. There's gonna be a, a mild sensation, leash pressure towards me, she commits towards me, button goes away, I guide her in and tell her good girl. So I'm going to guide her all the way in. If I miss that the first time, I want to make sure I reiterate. I'm going to reel her in. You're going to watch the leash pressure, it's very light. It's just, it's more of a guiding motion than anything else. So, and I'm going to always go from behind her. Basically what I'm, what I'm working towards is getting head turns where the dog's turning and coming towards me on her own. And then I'll apply a word. I'm not going to use a command right now. The reason is, I want to make sure that she's turning her head because of the e-collar sensation, not having heard the word C-O-M-E a hundred thousand times from her owner, and not necessarily coming. But. So, press the button in a second when she's not looking. Guidance. Off the butt. Good. 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 Let her come back out. So, once again, when you see dogs that have worked with us and been, been trained, they're, they're pretty sensitive leash-wise. So, she's already in proximity-wise with me, so she's already watching me because she's been trained to heal really well. She's not so inclined to just kind of wander off, so I'll just take my time, wait for the right moment. On. Good girl, good girl. And you see her tail's wagging, she's happy, she doesn't look distressed or, or freaked out or anything like that. That means we're working at a nice good level for her, but I can tell that she's feeling it. Good girl, good. See how I'm reeling around? I'm just basically taking up the slack on the leash, and I'm also moving. Wow, racing supers. Uh, I'm also moving backwards. So creating motion keeps the dog a little more engaged. Plus, it creates more distance, perception of a distance that the dog's traveling to you on the recall. Because I don't have the leash really extended that far right now. So that keeps the dog focused, motivated, animated, and traveling further to me. Once again, on. Good girl, look at you. Nice. Good. So she's giving already a little bit of a head turn, which is awesome. So we'll let her get back out. Come on, Miss Grace. Get out there, go do your thing. Come on. Good. 
Good, 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 good. So when you hear me say good, you know that I'm off the button. Because as soon as I say good, I've swapped. I'm off this and I'm on this. So that's kind of a, a, good, a good way to remember it. On. Good, 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 good. Good, guys. Come on, sweetie boy. Come on, sweetie boy. Let's go. Come on. Huh? Good girl. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Good. This way. Good girl. So I'm just going to get into a bit of a rhythm right now with her. To start to create some head turns. Huh? Good. Good, good, good. good. Good girl. Good girl. Fun. Good. I'm gonna make sure you guide her all the way in. Good. Come on. Come on. Good. This is awesome on so many levels because you know when I first went to get Gracie for her board and train, you know, she tried to bite me many, many, many times. So she actually did bite me a couple times. Um, so she's come a long way, so this is just an awesome kind of icing on the cake that we're working on something as cool as e-collar off-leash training for her. But just the fact that she doesn't bite people anymore is pretty fantastic. So we'll give her a second. On. Good girl. Good girl. Good. Come on, sweetie pie. So all I'm doing is I'm teaching her that by turning her head and coming towards me, she turns off this weird sensation, this leash pressure, or this e-collar pressure.